When's the last time you lifted the tail to inspect your tailwheel assembly? Did you know anything about rotating bush tires? And I'm going to give my opinions on tire pressure. My name is Neil. I'm a former Air Force A-10 pilot and fighter weapons school graduate. Follow me on my journey to learn backcountry aviation in my Cub Crafters Carbon Cub FX3. Hello everybody, I'm Neil. I've got a 2021 Carbon Cub FX3. I'm a first time aircraft owner and learning a lot as I go trying to share some of these lessons with you all so maybe you can pick up something to inspect or learn from or um, as you'll see in the topics of this video uh, maybe something you weren't aware of. Uh, communication is very important and sharing tips with each other really helps all of us out. Uh, I've been dealing with tailwheel shimmy issues and uh, it's time to get to the bottom of it. In May of 2022 I did, did my first owner assisted condition inspection about that time frame, Trent Palmer came out with a video, uh, which I will link um, above, and also put the link in the description. Um, we, you can see during his annual, he had a problem with a fuselage that his tailwheel assembly mounts to. Like uh, him, I've got the T3 tailwheel, which is just a spring uh, that uh, replaces the leaf spring assembly uh, that Carbon Cub Car Cub Crafters uses um, by default. Uh, there are different options out there from different vendors, <clears throat> but my goal is just to try to minimize the stresses on the fuselage with a good spring assembly. On the end of that spring assembly is the same thing, uh, the standard ABI 3200 uh, tailwheel assembly from Alaska Airframes. And um, so I did give them a call. Um, well, let me back up a minute. Uh, you're familiar with the advanced tailwheel training I've got on my channel. Um, on the second flight with that instructor we came back and I was missing uh, the spring clips that holds the uh, chain links to the uh, steering arm on the ABI 3200. Um, don't know how those links came off much less on both sides. Um, fortunately uh, well one of them was still intact just had to reconnect the uh, chain link the other one was gone. Uh, fortunately the instructor had a spare uh, from his J3 setup uh, I ordered uh, half a dozen from Aircraft Spruce after that. It was a good thing because here I went flying uh, this past week and I lost another uh, clip. Uh, they're not easy to come off. I don't know how it works its way off, but it was gone. Something had to, something is causing this. Um, over the year and a half I've been flying, every now and then I get a tailwheel shimmy issue. So it was time to put in a call to Airframes Alaska. Uh, or Alaska Airframes, whatever they go by, and uh, talked to Gabe. Uh, very patient and uh, had a great discussion with him. Um, the most important thing on these ABI 3200s is at the swivel point um, that the leading edge is level or higher than the trailing edge. If that leading edge of that swivel is lower, that can cause tailwheel shimmy. Now, Airframes Alaska does have a uh, anti-shimmy device, but it doesn't work on the T3 um, for some reason. T3 is pretty basic. It's really just a spring uh, shock absorber. Um, but the ABI 3200 has some adjustments, and he had asked me, you know, have you uh, taken it apart? You know, there are things that can wear out. When's the last time he did this? And uh, never uh, was the answer to all the above. Um, haven't even raised the tail of uh, my airplane to inspect the tailwheel assembly until this past week. So, um, Having a discussion with him, one about the T3 and some, you know, uh, spring tension. Should I tighten the uh, the uh, spring? Uh, then there's a little red knob on there, and he told me about that. Close it all the way clockwise, then go to one click, which is really a detent counterclockwise. Uh, so I rechecked that. But uh, this week, this past week, I actually raised the tail, did an inspection, and I'm going to show you a video of uh, what I found. Hard in the air compressor break in noise this seems loose probably the reason for my shimmy so that bolt is probably not tight or has come loose so as you can see from that video something is loose don't know how long it's been loose but i'm glad i raised the tail and uh inspected the tailwheel assembly um, by myself, the engine uh, lift that I have in my hangar is the easiest option. Um, I do have some saw horses, which I haven't used before. Uh, I think they're 3,000 pound rated, but I just uh, decided to use the engine lift, get the weight off the wheel, and uh, 
and uh, get things inspected and, and checked out. Now I could not find, I don't know what the torque value is on that. Uh, I believe it's a, uh, I don't want to call it a 5 8 bolt. Um, if anybody knows that, feel free to share because uh, others are going to be inspecting theirs as well. The one with the leaf spring has two bolts. The T3, you just have uh, one bolt uh, that connects the two parts. Now there is a groove, uh, so it keeps everything in line, which is nice. There's another screw that's on the bottom of the uh, ABI 3200, which is what Gabe told me about, that adjusts the tension of how easily the, the uh, wheel actually can pivot. So I did adjust that and tighten it a little bit, try to prevent any free spinning um, of the tail wheel, uh, which is actually going to occur on the second landing that I'm going to show you a video of uh, in a few minutes here. Um, so I'm going to talk tire pressure a little later, but um, I was told by another Carbon Cub owner about running a higher pressure in the tail wheel than uh, what Cub Crafters uh, recommends, and that helps to prevent shimmy situations as well. Um, we'll get to that uh, as part three of this video, uh, talking about tire pressures, just my opinions as a new aircraft owner, and, uh, and I'll explain why I have those opinions. So anyways, uh, uh, the chain link assembly, how tight, uh, I've, um, I've seen them slack. Uh, I don't even know that they're even required other than some steering assist. Remember some planes don't even have steerable tailwheels. Um, uh, another carbon cub owner told me it's neither slack nor um, uh, stretching the, the spring. Uh, I ended up taking another link or two out uh, so it's a little bit tighter. Um, so I'm experimenting with the uh, uh, tension of the chain links. Uh, pretty easy to replace or, or take the links off or put them back on as needed. Uh, so fortunately I had extra clips so I replaced the missing clip. Uh, from uh, this recent flight and then I went out and did some uh, test flying. So let's talk about the uh, next subject which is uh, bush tire maintenance. Did you know that uh, Airframes Alaska uh, with the Alaskan bush wheels actually recommends rotating the bush tire every 100 hours or annual? Um, I'm going to show you a picture of coming in for a landing and you can you can see that uh, these aircraft with th this type of landing air configuration with weight off the wheels actually has a camber or a cant in angle uh, to the tires. And uh, you know I've got heavy tread 31s uh, but I believe that thicker slightly thicker rubber is in the center section and where people um, get cords showing is on that outer edge which is obviously where your first contact is on landings. Um, my uh, home base is asphalt. They won't let us uh, land on the grass, although there's a perfect area to be landing on the grass. Um, <clears throat> but repeated uh, scuffing, if you will, on that outer uh, corner uh, is going to um, wear these tires out pretty quick. So by rotating the tires on the rim, so you're actually doing a, a 180 flip um, on the rim is going to help um, even out that uh, outer contact point and uh, hopefully prolong the life of the bush tires. Uh, I've got a uh, 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 document, it's a PDF that I found on the Air Airframes Alaska uh, website uh, that talks not only about storage but maintenance and operations. Um, you know, tire inflation uh, while storage. But you can see here in the uh, third bullet down in the uh, middle section, the maintenance section, rotate tires every 100 hours or at your annual, whichever comes first. Rotate both side to side and on the wheel assembly itself so the valve stems point inboard one time, outboard the next. Um, so that's uh, good information and hopefully prolong the life of these super expensive tires for those of us that can't always land on grass. Now if you're landing on asphalt or uh, desert environment I would imagine it's probably not too good for the tires either um, as well as taxiing where you're taxiing. Um, you know very expensive tires we want to do everything we can to uh, prolong the life. Uh, the Behringer's uh, very simple uh, to remove the wheel assemblies you just cut a safety wire that holds the wheel on. You remove the axle nut um, and uh, cut the safety wire and then the wheel comes right off. Uh, you don't have to touch anything with the brakes or any disconnects. 
uh, and then just unscrew the wheel assembly and let me back up. Obviously you want to deflate the tire and uh, when I asked Pete Dougherty at uh, Cub Crafters about this, he also recommend removing the core of the Schrader valve and uh, it's great advice. I've seen uh, even uh, the aircraft maintenance manual from Cub Crafters on, if you look at uh, section 32 on tailwheel maintenance, um, uh, talks about removing the core, but after you depressurize the tire, otherwise you're going to have a projectile. Um, so you can get uh, a uh, core removal tool tool from Amazon, which is what I got. So I got as much air out of these tires as I could, and then I removed the core of the Schrader valve. Simple to remove, simple to put back in place. Oh, uh, by the way, one plug for a grip mat, G R Y P M A T. I have several of their grip mat. They're like little storage. Uh, they're uh, rubber storage trays, uh, great to put in the plane. Anytime you're taking screws out, um, always use, uh, you know, keep your parts organized. I had actually uh, put some screws in the shirt. I had to remove the GDU 465, the G3X display, and I put the four screws in my pocket. I went into the aft cargo uh, to get a tool, and sure enough, the screws came out of my shirt pocket. Um, lesson learned, put them in a, um, some type of a, uh, uh, organizer so um, you don't have any parts go missing on you. Same thing with the uh, Schrader core as well as the uh, however many six eight ten screws uh, come out that hold the wheel assembly together. Then of course I needed to go get a different torque wrench uh, from Lowe's because uh, 105 inch pounds uh, if you divide inch pounds by 12 that'll give you foot pounds which is uh, lower than what my uh, torque wrench with foot pounds uh, goes down to. So do the job right, get the right tools. Off to Lowe's I went. Uh, I got a torque wrench that could do the 105 inch pounds, uh, which is 8.75 uh, foot pounds, and uh, reassembled uh, the wheel and, uh, and reinflated them. Uh, I do have a 12 volt uh, inflator I use, which took forever, and uh, yeah, don't recommend it. Burned out one of them. Fortunately, I have two of them. One stays, they were both in the plane. Now there's only one in the plane and uh, bought a nice little DeWalt uh, air compressor, which I'll use uh, in the future. Um, I do have a bottle jack that I use to uh, jack up the tire and there's a little rubber uh, 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 piece that goes on top. Just adds uh, some protection uh, to the contact point. I've actually used two of these to get weight off the wheels when I go on my trip on my motorhome. Um, taking weight off the tires, get them off the ground. Um, I will put links in the description of the bottle jack and then that additional part that goes with the bottle jack. And it works perfect. I'll, you'll see a picture here of uh, me jacking the tire and uh, getting the wheel off. So it wasn't hard to do. Now I'll take that back. Get, getting the safety cable, which, oh, by the way, when I took that safety cable off, it looked thicker than normal to me. You know, typically we're using 0.032 safety cable for what we do with the aircraft maintenance. And, uh, Sure enough, I came home, read the manual after I did the work, which was brilliant, and saw that they recommended, uh, or they specified 0.04, which I happen to have. Um, so it was hard enough getting that uh, safety, car, safety wire threading into the grooves. Take some practice for us first-timers, uh, but um, after several attempts, I uh, got it done, got it done right. Uh, I still wasn't comfortable. Last thing I needed is for a wheel to be coming off on landing. Uh, so check, recheck, 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 double checked, um, use a flashlight, uh, make sure I understood everything, went to the aircraft maintenance manual. Cub Crafters has a newer AMM out for the uh, Cub owners. Uh, Revision B, I believe, is the latest now, and it covers more, uh, including the Behringer um, uh, procedures, which is nice. So good job, Pete, on adding that. Um, so that's about it for the... Uh, rotating tires. So just FYI about the uh, guidance here, I will link the PDF uh, uh, for you to uh, have on file. So that'll be in the description of this video. Chesterfield traffic, uh, bait number Charlie, taking one five for departure, Chesterfield. Alright, I'm going to be testing out the tail, tail wheel inspection.
Due to some shimmy issues, I got the Insta 360 pointing backwards. And it's a nice night to go fly.
socially. Seven degrees outside right now. Nice evening, Virginia. And leaning uh, for taxi. I pull back until the RPM rises 10 to 20. Nine ninety. Rise or click. There's 20 up. 